Assalamualaikum and very good morning. How are you guys? Uh, I wish you are in a good condition. I really hope that you can still uh, want to listen to me. Okay, let's do some summary about plan design because I have been invited to give you a lecture about a mesh balance because I'm teaching mesh balance this semester. But before we go to mesh balance, let us do, let us review what you have done and if you have any question, you can leave it in a comment below. Okay, this time I will turn on my comment, okay? So your plan design start with your title, basically a production of MSD, for example, that's my group. Uh, for example, uh, production of acetic acid, production of uh, ethanol or anything I cannot remember all your title and then you start with your title and basically from the title is basically it is a product that you want to produce from your plant okay when you have this product and moving along with your task one you start with task one whereby you have to find your uh, process I'm sorry that my handwriting is not that good. So you have to identify three process, right? And you have to evaluate between all these three process, which one should be more profitable, which one is should be more economical, and which one you should choose. Okay? And then moving along to task 1B whereby you have to do a feasibility study. Remember that uh, you just have to estimate the value. You can Google, find online value because it is an estimate. Because it is an uh, estimation only. You don't have to calculate in detail because later on you will calculate it. Okay. And I don't want to talk much more on a feasibility study because I really like to talk about design and engineering okay when you do a feasibility study and everything is here lah, your feasibility study okay so when you have a process uh, regardless any process you have you should know what is the equipment the equipment to do the process okay you should know what equipment involved in uh, order to this equipment will do that process okay so that process can be divided into that equipment can be divided into a reactor itself okay or reaction it also have a mass transfer equipment and heat transfer equipment and also a auxiliary equipment okay up to this point you should be familiar with all those equipment okay and i'm planning to making a, a video or uh, about all this equipment but i'm st still running out of time okay i try my best hopefully uh your task have some time hopefully you still have hopefully i still have a time to do a video i don't want to be uh, it's too late madam we already need to submit and you already produce a video it's too late hopefully not okay uh, so what is a reaction equipment equipment for the reaction to occur inside that okay basically you know you learn a reaction engineering so you have a reactor okay and it could be also a bio reactor or a fermenter okay i don't want to wrote it there because it took me some time to wrote, <laughs> to write it there okay and then how about a uh, mesh transfer equipment mass transfer equipment is basically an equipment whereby a mass transfer process occur inside it okay uh, it could be a separation process it could be a mixing process okay and i believe that you will account more on a separation as compared to mixing okay a separation process so from a separation process, uh, the equipment could be a distillation column, okay, 
it could be a cooling tower okay it could be a absorption tower it could be absorption tower it could be a centrifuge okay centrifuge it could be also a crystallizer okay because you want to separate make it into a, make it make it it to become a crystal uh maybe also a filter not maybe it is okay i shouldn't use that word okay it is a filter regardless any type of filter whether it is a filter press or rotary drum filter or any type of filter and it also uh dryer okay because you want to remove the water from the component so the water being removed meaning to see the mass being transferred that is a mass transfer equipment so how about heat transfer equipment heat transfer equipment is basically the equipment that do heat transfer and for example you have a heat exchanger okay when you have a heater to heat up your process when you have a furnace a boiler a, a condenser a evaporator all the process that yeah? all the equipment that do a process okay? in order for a process occur it have to be done in a specific equipment that later on you have to design okay that is plan design for example you want to taking a picture okay if you want to take a picture you are using the correct equipment which is a camera regardless any kind of camera but you have to use a correct equipment for you to do that process okay Okay, can we continue? Okay. Oh, I didn't change the color, right? Everything is blue. Not really interesting. Why not we change to another color? Okay, and later on in task, task 2, basically you have to do a mass balance and energy balance. Okay. So, let us do some quick review what is mass balance all about. And how do you think you should start? Okay. Okay. When you have a mass balance, okay, I would like to divide it into uh, two, which is a non-reactive okay, and a reactive. Okay. Why do we need to divide into this uh, these two section? It's because of the non-reactive one is simple okay when you have non-reactive uh, what does it mean by non-reactive and how to relate this non-reactive with all the equipment how to relate equipment with non-reactive it's basically uh, non-reactive which is uh, involved in heat transfer equipment when you do a mass balance for heat transfer equipment it is a non-reactive mass trans mass balance. Same goes when you do a uh, mass balance for your mass mass balance for your mass transfer equipment later on. It's also a non-reactive mass balance. Okay, and for your reaction, of course lah, it's going to be a reactive. Basically, when you do a mesh balance for your reactor or for your fermenter or your bio reactor or any name of your reactor, it is a reactive mesh balance. Okay, that is the first. Why do we concern? Because later on, you're going to do a mesh balance for your plant. Okay, based on the process that you have, you have been chosen based on the equipment based of based on the equipment that you're going to be used in order to do your process you have to do a mesh balance i was forgot 
before you start your mesh balance or energy balance, you really need to determine your operating condition, which is a temperature, pressure, pH, uh, phases, or any else, any parameter. But commonly, this one, okay, commonly is a temperature, and pressure, and also a phases. That is the most common operating condition that you really need to determine at all your stream okay so this tree is called a reaction path okay reaction pathway okay in any of this reaction pathway it on what it's involved a several process okay and that several process can be divided uh, into mass transfer process heat transfer process reaction process so mass transfer process occur in mass transfer equipment heat transfer process occur in heat transfer equipment same goes with correction and i also forgot to mention to you about auxiliary what is auxiliary auxiliary is basically like a compressor a pump a flash drum and what why we why do you need auxiliary it is because of your operating condition. This auxiliary will support your operating condition, will support so that you have a continuous process. Okay, so for example, your auxiliary could be a pump. Okay, your auxiliary could be a pump. Okay, remember what is the function of pump? Pump is used to increase pressure. Okay. Uh, we squeeze up everything so that you don't get confused what I'm trying to write what I'm trying to write here okay what is uh, auxiliary equipment okay this auxiliary equipment is an equipment to support your major equipment your heat transfer mass transfer and reactor is a major equipment without it you cannot do any process okay and without auxiliary, you cannot maintain, you cannot get your desired operating condition. Okay, why do you need desired operating condition? Because your reaction occur only at a specific temperature, at a specific pressure. Okay, that's why you really have to take care about your operating condition. Okay, for example, the auxiliary could be a pump. What does pump do? Pump will increase the pressure for a liquid. Okay, you might asking me, Madam, I don't have an increase in pressure or is 1 ATM. So, why I still need a pump? Yes, you still need a pump because last time, I don't know you are still remember or not, when you learn fluid mechanics, you learn about friction, you learn about pressure drop, you learn about uh, loss by friction, your 180M will somehow reduce. Okay, that is one thing. Another thing is the pump is using when you are one, when you have a continuous process from one equipment to another equipment, you want to transport between these two equipment, you still need a pump. Okay, later on we talk in detail about it. Okay, maybe in, not in this video. Okay, and what is compressor? Compressor also been used to increase pressure, but it is specifically for gas. Okay, it cannot be used for liquid. Okay, don't misunderstand uh, about that. Don't interchange between that. And it could be also a flash drum. Okay, what does flash drum do? Flash drum or throttle valve, okay, throttle valve will reduce the pressure and will change the phase. Change the phase from gas to, no, sorry, from liquid to gas. That is what flash drum do. Okay. Um, up to this point, I really hope that you're still with me. Okay, keep on your set point tracking.